Tonight's video starts on page eight in your pink packet, and we are going to be talking about independent probability, but this first page is a little bit of review, and please carefully read the table. Make sure you know how to read this table. For instance, four students studied for two hours. Five students studied for three hours. So you have to calculate the mean amount of time spent on homework. So hours divided by how many students there were. So you have to calculate that, taking total hours divided by total students. Then you're answering questions 51 and 52, some review questions on your own, and we will go over that first thing tomorrow. On to the next page. This is where we start 11.3, independent events. Independent probability, when the first event in a compound probability does not affect the second event. So you have, and the spinner, um, uh, uh, the picture obviously wasn't drawn on here, it must have got cut off somehow. So there's a spinner that has sections one and two only, two sections on it, and then there are three cards, a red card, a blue card, and a yellow card. So, spinning the spinner and getting a one or a two does not affect picking the color card. Just like if you were to flip a coin and then spin a, a spinner that has A, B, and C on it. Heads or tails does not affect what you can get on the A, B, or C. Picking a card out of a deck of cards and you get an ace. You look at it and you put it back in the deck of cards and then you ask your friend, oh, here's the deck of cards. What's the probability that you would get an ace also? There are still four aces in the deck of cards when you replace it. So the chance of him getting an ace is exactly the same as the chance of you getting an ace, four out of 52. That's independent probability. Consider the spinner, sections one and two, and you might wanna draw that on there, and three color cards. They are blue, red, and yellow. You can draw a tree diagram to represent the independent events that form the compound event. Two things happening, compound event, and their corresponding probabilities. Notice that there are fractions drawn on this tree diagram, because when you only have two sections on the spinner, you have one out of two chances of getting a one, one out of two chances getting a two. You have three different colored cards. So one out of three chances of picking blue, one out of three chances of picking red, one out of three chances picking a yellow. In general, for two independent events, A and B, the multiplication rule of probability states that the probability of event A that's the spinner, and the probability of event B, that's picking the card. To find their total probability, you multiply what's the probability of getting a, a two on the spinner times the probability of getting, for instance, a yellow card. So you're gonna multiply the individual probabilities of each event. You can use this multiplication rule to find the probability of spinning a two, which is one half, one out of two, and drawing a red card, which is one out of three. So the probability of getting a two and a red would be one sixth. In fact, each one of these events, a one and a blue, one half times one third, one sixth. A one and a red, one half times one third, one sixth. A one and a yellow, one half times one third, one sixth. Because these are the same uh, probability, one half and one third, all the way down, you have one out of six chances. This is a uniform probability model where you have one out of six chances of getting a number one or two on the spinner and a blue, red, or yellow card. A game is played with a fair coin, meaning it has a heads and a tail side. 
and a box that contains one green token, two red tokens, and one blue token. To win the game, the player must draw randomly a green token from the box and land heads when tossing the coin. So you're going to pick something out of the box and then flip the coin. So there's the order. That tells you how to set up your tree diagram. Picking from the box and landing heads. So in the box, there's a green, two red, and one blue. A total of four tokens or little um, discs that you can pick up that are colored. Since two of them are red, it's the same thing as two fourths here, but they're showing it as one half. I would prefer that it said two fourths um, because there's one token that's a green out of four, two tokens that are red out of four, and one token that's blue out of four. Then the heads or tails, that probability is exactly the same. Heads one half of the time, tails one half of the time. So you can see those fractions on the tree diagram. We're now going to be adding our fractions to the tree diagrams. So draw a tree diagram to represent this compound event. So you could get green and heads or green and tails. You could get red and heads or red and tails. You can get blue with heads or blue with tails. Use the multiplication rule of probability to find the probability of winning the game in one try. Winning the game was a player must randomly draw a green token, so you can see the probability of getting a green, and get a heads on tossing the coin. So the probability of getting green was one-fourth. This is the fraction. And the probability of getting heads was one-half. So one-fourth times one-half is one-eighth. So the probability of winning the game in a single try, getting green and heads, is one-eighth. We could figure out the other probabilities as well. For instance, um, green and tails would also be one fourth times one half, which gives you one eighth. We already figured that one was one eighth. The probability of getting reds and heads is two fourth, two fourths times one half, which comes out to be two eighths. The probability of getting red and tails is two-fourths times one-half, which is two-eighths. The probability of getting blue and heads is one-fourth times one-half, which is one-eighth. And the probability of getting blue and tails is one-fourth times one-half, which equals one-eighth. Now if I add up the last column here, one-eighth plus one-eighth plus two-eighths plus two-eighths plus one-eighth plus one-eighth, Yes, this entire column adds to eight, all eight out of eight possibilities, which equals one. The probabilities in the last column should add to all equal one. All 100% of the probabilities are shown there. In number four, next page, page 11. A box contains five blue tokens and four red tokens. Two tokens are randomly drawn one at a time with replacement meaning you pick a blue one out, you look at it, you record it, and you put it back in. So there are still nine tokens in the box. We're going to get to the point where, oh, you may take the token out and leave it out. That's dependent probability. That's coming next. Right now we're putting them back in. It's called replacement. So we start with five blue and four red, a total of nine. So red, we need to fill in some of these fractions here. There are four out of nine red tokens. Picking a blue, looking at it, and putting it back in, there are still five out of nine blue tokens. There are four out of nine red tokens. There are five out of nine blue tokens, and there are four out of, red, out of nine red tokens. So my outcomes, notice the nice headings here. Everybody's remembering the headings. And we have, we could get a blue with a blue, which is five-ninths times five-ninths, which gives me 25 out of 81 possibilities. 
So prior to using fractions in our tree diagram, if you were to draw this, you would have probably done something like this. Oh, you can get a blue, a blue, a blue, a blue, a blue, and a red, a red, a red, and a red. So you have nine choices for your first, right? We have nine possibilities there. Then you would have to also show nine branches off of each of these, which would make 81 things in your tree diagram. Ugh, thank goodness for fractions. We don't have to draw all 81 branches. But there are a total of 81 possibilities when you have nine tokens for your first draw and nine tokens for your second draw. The counting principle tells us multiply your choices. Nine times nine, 81 total possibilities. So blue and then red would be five ninths from my blue and four ninths from my red, which would give me a total of 20 out of 81 possibilities. And red then blue, the commutative property says four ninths times five ninths, which is 20 out of 81 possibilities. And then red red. There are fewest red, so this should be the lowest amount, which is, yes it is, four ninths times four ninths has the lowest probability of only 16 out of 81. Now remember what I said in the last tree diagram. The last column should add to one. So 25 plus 20 is 45, plus 20 is 65, plus 16 is 81 80 firsts. So I do have all my possibilities. I did multiply correctly. That's a good way to check yourself. So find the probability of first drawing a blue token followed by a red. So we did this right here. Blue and red came out to be 20 80 firsts. And yes, I could draw the, write the two fractions in here, but I did it in the tree diagram. So 5 ninths times 4 ninths. The probability of a blue and then a red is 20 out of 81. Find the probability of red red, well I did that one and it was 16 out of 81. So we found our total probabilities there. And the last problem for today on page 12, um, it says a box contains, so now no tree diagram at all, we're going to have to draw the tree diagram. Each time a little bit more work for us to do. A box contains 20 yellow balls and five green balls. Two balls are randomly drawn, one at a time, with replacement, that's key. So you, you reach into the bag, oh, it's a yellow one, you put it back in. There's still 25 balls total in the bag to choose from. So, I gotta have my headings. So we are drawing them, so I'm gonna say draw one, or first pick, or first choice. Draw one, draw two, putting my heading columns on first because everybody always forgets those, and outcomes. So what are my choices, yellow or green? Separate them apart because you're going to want to draw the branches in. So I can get a yellow or a green. Yellow has 20 out of 25 possibilities, and green only has 5 out of 25. Then on draw two, again, I can choose either a yellow or a green. And I still have 20 out of 25 for the yellow and 5 out of 25 for the green. Make sure you can read your fractions. So yellow, again, is 20 out of 25, and green is 5 out of 25. So now I come to my outcomes, and I can get a yellow yellow, which is 20 20 fifths times 20 20 fifths, which gives me a total of 400 620 fifths. 400 out of 625 ways to choose out of those 25 balls that are in the bag. 625 possibilities. Wow, that would be a huge tree diagram. Now it's just four, much smaller. So 20 out of 25 for yellow, 
times green is only 5 out of 25. Well, that's 100 out of 625. Green yellow would be green is 5 out of 25, and yellow is 20 out of 25. So again, we get 100. We did the commutative property. We changed the order of multiplying our fractions. It's called commutative. Green, green. So I have green, 5 out of 25, times 5 out of 25, which gives me 25 out of 625. And again, I can check 400 plus 100 is 500, plus 100 is 600, plus 25, all 625 possibilities. I've multiplied correctly, so now I'm going to answer my questions. Find the probability of first drawing a yellow followed by a green. Yellow followed by green equals 100 out of 625. Now my work is shown up above here in my tree diagram, so I'm okay if you just write down 100 out of 625. Find the probability of first drawing a green followed by a yellow. So that's the commutative property. And again, that's going to be 100 out of 625. And then find the probability of drawing yellow, yellow. And we saw that that had the greatest probability, right? Because most of the balls are yellow. That was 400 out of 625. So that's what we're going to be working on in class, independent events. What happens in the first event does not affect what happens the second pick or the second draw. And we'll work on this more in class tomorrow.